Again, I'd like to read something I just received, which may find to be helpful. <clears throat> this is from a devotee whose name is Shigaranga Das. This is from Russia. This is in reference to the uh, COVID, the uh, coronavirus. Dear devotees, the assistance of His Grace Adaya Dhamma Prabhu, Dr. Tur Sunov just informed me that he has developed a subtle healing method for the coronavirus. If anyone has symptoms of the virus, send a message with a picture of your face, as you are right now, to the following number, and he is going to be able to treat you. The number is plus seven nine. Zero zero two nine seven two one zero eight plus seven nine zero zero two nine seven two one zero eight, and you can contact him by way of WhatsApp. Please try to contact him only if you actually have the symptoms of the virus and need help. His Grace Adarya Dharma, Adarya Dharma, 
is a doctor and successful preacher in Russia. Practically 90% of all Russian-speaking devotees joined because of him and his lectures. His healing methods have helped already many people around the world. And he's also the one that came up with the uh, <clears throat> treatment that take a lot of ginger, turmeric regularly, and this will also help to keep the virus away. <clears throat> so um, I'll read it again at the end of the lecture, and you can uh, get this number. If you feel like you have symptoms, just send a picture of your face and he'll treat you by way of subtle methods. Let's see. It's worth a try in this age right now. This, this virus is quite insidious. It's also developed strands of itself. So it's manifesting in different forms. It's really like a quite avaricious disease. It's spreading fast. We have close to 200,000 uh, devo not devotees, I'm sorry, but people in America who have already been infected with the disease. And around the world, it's oh, it's, a, it's almost 300,000 around the world with about 27,000 deaths already. Uh, 300 devotees, from what I heard, worldwide have been infected with the disease and four have left their body. Of course, one that left his body was practically 80 years old and he had other health issues also, so. But still, four devotees have been. So uh, this disease is not anywhere under control. In fact, it's becoming more and more um, spread, widespread. So this doctor wants to uh, help the devotees if you feel you have any symptoms or you do have symptoms, then uh, contact him through this number, which I'll read again, plus 7900297108. Okay. So I've chose a verse tomorrow, we, as we all know, April 2nd is the divine appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Ramchandra, one of the most auspicious and important uh, festivals for honoring the Lord in his personal form as Sri, Sri Ramchandra. So I chose one verse here from the uh, fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, text number five. Tonight will be a little bit of an introduction to tomorrow's class. Tomorrow we will give class at 7.45 Croatian time, which is 6.45 London time, UK time, like that. So if you're interested, you can tune in. So here's a verse from the uh, fourth chapter. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Bhuhuni me vetitani Janmani Tarvacharjuna Tanaham Veda Sarvani Natvam Vetu Parantapaha Translation, the personality of God had said, many, many births, both you and I have passed. I can remember all of them, but you cannot, O subduer of the enemy. 
Krishna is speaking to Arjuna. Srila Prabhupada's purport. In the Brahma Samhita, we have information of many, many incarnations of the Lord. It is stated, Advaitam achutam anadi anantarupam adhyam purana purushona vayauvanam cha vedesha durlab avadurlam atma bhakto govindamari purusham tamaham bhajami. I worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna Govinda, who is the original person, absolute, infallible, without beginning. Although expanded into unlimited forms, he is still the same original, the oldest, and the person always appearing as a fresh youth. Such eternal, blissful, all-knowing forms of the Lord are usually understood by the best Vedic scholars, but they are always manifested to pure, unalloyed devotees. In the Brahma Samhita, it is said, 539, Krishna Swayam Samabhavat Paramam Pamanyo Govindamari Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. I worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna Govinda who is always situated in various incarnations such as Rama, Nisringa, and many sub-incarnations as well, but who is the original personality of God and known as Krishna, and who incarnates personally also. In the Vedas also it is said that the Lord, although one without a second, manifests himself in innumerable forms. He is like the Vaidurya stone, which changes colors, yet remains one. And although multi-forms are understood by the pure unalloyed devotees, but not multi-forms, but not by a simple study of the Vedas, Vedashu, Durlam, Abba Durlam, Atma Bhakto, devotees like Arjun are constant companions of the Lord. And whenever the Lord incarnates, the associates of the devotees also incarnate in order to serve the Lord in different capacities. Arjuna is one of these devotees and in this verse is understood that some millions of years when the Lord spoke the Bhagavad Gita to the sun god Arjuna in a different capacity, he was also present. But the difference between the Lord and Arjuna is that the Lord remembered the incident whereas Arjuna could not. That is the difference between the part and parcel living entity and the Supreme Lord. So the the the, uh, the uh, verse goes on, or the purport goes on to describe a little bit more about the Lord and His eternal nature, and how He is always conscious of everything, past, present, and future, and everything in relationship to Him is identical with Him, and at the same time, different from Him. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmiline Tam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Bande Ham Shiguro Shiuta Padakamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrujatam Sahaganat Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sa Dvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Swari Vishavanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha Vatitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Sivasiri Gaur Bhakta Vrindam 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो या द लॉर्ड अपीयर्स इन मेनी फॉर्म्स ऑल्दो ही इज वन नित्यो नित्यनम चैतनस चैतनानम एको बहुदाम विरदाति कामान ही इज वन who maintains all the rest of the living entities no one is equal to no one is greater than the supreme lord and in order to show compassion to the fallen souls he appears in this world in different forms in order to uh, destroy a religion and at the same time reestablish religious principles but most of all and this is the dearest thing to the lord is that he comes to enliven his devotees and also give them protection so one of the more important forms of the lord is uh, shri ramchandra and if we look at the uh, gradations of forms we find that Uh, Ishwara Parma Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karna Karna The original supreme personality of God had the absolute truth is Sumnam Bonam the cause of all causes the principle uh, uh manifest not manifestation but the source of all manifestations of the Godhead Ate Cham Sam Kalam Pum Sam Krishna's too Bhagavan Swayam So all manifestations are ultimately expansions of the original personality of God at Sri Krishna. And we understand there are gradations within all the manifestation or incarnations of the Lord are equally powerful but they only exhibit a certain level of power due to their particular mission that they appear in earth on or in wherever they appear throughout the universe so if we look according to the structure of the spiritual world we find that there are planets that go up and up and up and up and up before they reach the goloka vrindavan or krishna's abode in this in the highest manifestation in the spiritual world but the highest manifestation or the highest planet within the uh, vaikuntha realm is shri or ayodhya dham the place of shri ramchandra each of the incarnations have a particular planet in the spiritual world where they perform their pastimes and devotees who worship the lord in that form and achieve perfection in that worship return to that particular place or that that level of vaikuntha uh attainment so ramchandra is what we say uh quite elevated in terms of his activities and his um message for the world ultimately uh we see that uh, the living entities are overcome with various types of sinful activities which come in the form of various bad qualities you might use the term and these are sometimes mentioned as the six enemies of the mind which exist both within the mind of the conditioned soul and outside also all all pervading all of the creative universes and that is lust anger greed illusion pride and envy and now ramchandra he came to destroy the demon of lust each of the two manifestations of jaya and vijay or three manifestations of jaya and vijay are connected to one of these qualities or one of these when we say in artas hiranyaksha was the demon of greed ranikashipu was a demon of pride 
Ravana was a demon of lust. Kubhakarna, his brother, was a demon of illusion. Tantravarka was the demon of anger. Shishupa was the demon of envy. And these were the six manifestations in this material world of Jai and Vijay. And the Lord dispatched all of them. So we hear about Ramchandra. Yeah, he dispatched Ravana. Ravana is the personification of lust. In the scriptures it mentions how this principle of lust destroys all the good qualities of the living entity. It is compared to a fire which burns and has no control. <laughs> when one becomes afflicted or affected by lusty desires, one loses all intelligence and will act in what we say even sinful or even illegal ways in order to fulfill their lusty desires. Lust is manifested in two forms of itself. Sometimes it's, uh, or sometimes it's, we mostly see it as some kind of sexual thing, but that's only part of it. Lust means the, the unlimited desire to enjoy material things. So people who are overcome with lust, they can never satisfy their lust. And they're always trying to accumulate more and more and more. So this lust, of course, in the pastime with Ramchandra and Ravana, we see how this one demon, although very qualified, Ravana was an interesting person. And he was the son of Vishrava, who was a Brahmin. His mother was a demon. And sometimes it says, or does say, but sometimes it is considered that the son takes on the qualities of the mother, the daughter takes on the qualities of the father. That's generally true, but not an absolute principle. So Ravana had the qualities of his mother, who was a demon. But still, he had the intelligence of his father, who was a great Brahmana. And uh, he... Uh, was never satisfied, although he had so many followers. He had millions and millions of followers. He had a powerful kingdom, which was practically made out of gold. Every, the houses, the palaces. It was such a beautiful kingdom, as you see in the uh, Ramayana, how it's described. It was like a heavenly paradise and it was beautifully oriented, and everything was super opulent. He had that. He had followers. He had many wives. Uh, and his principal wife was considered to be one of the greatest ladies in the history of chaste ladies. Her name was Mandodari. And uh, still, although he had all this, wasn't satisfied. Um, it's not something that is unusual. It's something that is characteristic of material lust. It's never satisfied. The more you get, the more you want. <laughs> uh, Prabhupada said, yeah, just like sometimes a rich man, he'll have so much money, but he's always thinking how to get more. Although he may not need it, He's already living quite luxuriously and has everything he desires, but still he can't stop getting more and more money because he has this disease that more is better and it's pushing him to acquire more and more and more. So this is lust. So we see in the life of Ravana and he was advised so many times by his brothers, by his brother Bibishan, and by others that uh, you have so much. Why are you trying to kidnap another person's wife? <laughs> and why are you trying to hold another person's wife? And simply be satisfied. You have everything. 
you're powerful. But Ravana couldn't hear lusty desires. So it says every time one tries to satisfy lust, there is some satisfaction and the point of contact. But as, as time goes on, it also becomes even greater, that desire. For instance, we use the example, and this is a nice example, Prabhupada also uses this, where if you're building a fire and uh, you throw a piece of log on the fire, you'll see that the fire may go down a little bit, or some way, depending on the size of the log. And the fire seems to go down, but give it a few moments, and then after that log catches, the fire burns even more brighter, more stronger. So in the same way, this is how lust works. One tries to fulfill their lusty desires, and there's some satisfaction there, or temporary satisfaction. And then again, not so long after that, yeah, that desire again becomes strong and stronger and stronger and stronger. So this was Ravana. And therefore the Lord came, yada yada yadharmasya glanir bhavati bharata bhutanam dharmasya tadatmaham srijamiham pravitranaya sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam dharma samstarpana taya sambhavami yuge yuge. Prabhupada quotes this verse quite often in his lectures on the why the Lord incarnates in this material world. And so the Lord came to destroy the demon, the demon Ravana, who was harassing the world and had become very, very prominent and very, very powerful. The Lord also comes to perform his wonderful pastimes with his intimate associates. The Ramayan, the story of the life of Ram, is a great message to many of us who are trying to understand religious principles and even very great moral principles. Ram was a perfect king, a perfect husband, a perfect friend. He was perfect in these, these categories. And uh, also what we say, uh, in the principle of truthfulness, there is no one greater in truthfulness than Sri Ramchandra. He is righteousness personified. He followed religious principles so strictly that it even caused others to become a little disturbed how strictly he followed the religious principles. And that was Lord Ramachandra. So sometimes it's said, that if you want to learn how to live properly, or you want to learn the principles of day-to-day -day living, read and study Mahabharata. <laughs> because Mahabharata will give you so much. Mahabharata is so broad. It's, it's got enough for everyone from all angles of vision. It even sometimes breaches morality, but it also teaches uh, principles of uh, morality connected with devotion to the Supreme Lord. But it's about the lives of many, many great personalities, and some of them are quite, what we say, licentious, and others are very moral. So they say if you want to learn some of the principles of life, read the Mahabharata, study the Mahabharata. If you want to learn the principles of how to be a perfect leader, or if you're in a position of leadership, the Ramayan has everything you need and more. And if you want to learn how to love, <laughs> which is the, the highest principle of existence, then read and study Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> like that. Of course, there's a mixture of all these qualities in all three of these scriptures, but each one uh, has a particular what we say, emphasis on one of these three principles. How to live, how to lead, how to love. <laughs> so we learn from Ramchandra, what is the ideal leader? Whether you're a teacher, 
or whether you were a where you were a parent, whether you were a guru, or whether you were any in any position of leadership, the Ramayana is very full of principles on how to develop quality leadership and how to guide those who are your followers or dependent upon you like that. So the Ramayana is full like that. And we'll speak tomorrow uh, in length about some of the qualities about the Ramayana. But uh, it's very, very, very auspicious that uh, the devotees take time to honor and celebrate the appearance of the Lord because the appearance of the Lord uh, purifies the devotee and awakens devotion to the, to the Lord. Some devotees may be devotees of Ramchandra. Some devotees may be more inclined to Krishna, some others to, to Lord Chaitanya, some to Lord Nishringadev, like that. But all the incarnations of the Lord are wonderful because they manifest so many wonderful qualities and their pastimes are so interesting. Particularly the Ramayana is being read all around the world in different countries, sometimes under different names, but the Ramayana seems to be the most popular Vedic scripture in the world, even more popular than the Mahabharata. So the Ramayana is, of course, is very, very much read around the world. And uh, if you like romance, if you like adventure, if you liked uh, what we say, uh, how deeply the Lord deals with each and every person he comes in contact with. He's so personal and so much part of that person's life, even if it's a small interaction, that he becomes so, so much glorified by each and every person who comes in contact with him, even the demons. <laughs> he attracted the mind of Ibishan, who was born as the brother of Ravana, who became a great devotee simply by the presence of Lord Ramchandra and the mercy, of course. So these are, so tomorrow, April 2nd, around the world, we're celebrating the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Ramchandra, along with his brother, Lakshman, who was an incarnation of, um, of Lord Balaram. We see Balaram appears as Lakshman. He appears as Lord Nityananda. So we're, these manifestations of the Lord Gornitai, Krishna Balaram, Lakshman and Ram, they're all the same personalities manifested in different forms at different times to perform their pastimes and at the same time reestablish religious principles. Also, Mother Sita and, of course, Sri Hanumanji. The life of Hanuman is most interesting. He is the perfect devotee. He, he has given himself completely to the service of the Lord without any personal interest for his own safety or any personal gain. The life of Hanuman is just glorious and miraculous. And there's many, 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 many stories about the adventures of Hanuman. And, uh, and also we can pray to Hanumanji to become a better devotee of the Lord. He is empowered by the Lord to uh, give devotion to the Lord. So these are some of the, just some small points on the Ramayana and Ramachandra. Tomorrow we'll go much deeper into that. So take some time. I know some devotees around the world like to read the entire Ramayana on this on that day that is a good exercise but at least uh, spend a good part of your day hearing about the lord worshiping the lord and of course praying for the lord's mercy the availability of the lord's mercy on the appearance day of the lord becomes more 
due to his appearance. So we can always gain so much more mercy on these days of appearance of the Lord. Okay, so these are a few points on the Ramayan and Sri Ramchandra. Now we can speak a lot more about it, but we'll be speaking in length tomorrow from 7.45 Croatian time, 6.45 London time, hopefully for a couple of hours tomorrow morning. So we'll stop here for this evening. Uh, are there any comments or questions related? Yes, we have one from Germany. No? One from you. Okay. We need the microphone over to... Uh, what is your name again? Huh? Okay. Dr. Gabriel. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Your Holiness, for your lecture. Um, I understood uh, once, uh, just by once, uh, one passing by and giving me a teaching about uh, Lord Ramachandra on the last appearance, and I've understood that um, Hanuman uh, uh, saved his wife. And then Prabhu told me yesterday, no, it was a, it was a certain bird, it was a certain... Uh, Chitayo? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, if you if you can just say a, a thing about that, because I I don't know what what does Hanuman have with the kidnapping to do, and how, why was it uh, uh, so obvious to me until now that Hanuman was responsible for the for the coming well, back for the, of his wife? We we find at the end of the Ramayan, when everyone was going on their way back to Ayodhya, Ravana had been killed, Sita had been purified through the test of fire. They all were on the Vimana, and they were coming back. When they arrived, just when they arrived at the uh, gates of Ayodhya, uh, Sita had this very, very valuable necklace that she wore, which was given to her personally by Lord Ramachandra. And feeling so indebted to the service of Hanuman, she wanted to give that necklace to Hanuman as a gift. So, but she wanted the approval from Ram first. So she took off the necklace and indicated to Ram that I would like to give this to Sri Hanuman. Ram smiled and nodded affirmative and she presented that necklace to Hanuman. Just recently, I'm reading the series where Hanuman had just crossed the ocean and then what he did when he was in Lanka in order to uh, to uh, find Sita, to bring the message back to Ram and what he did to, to destroy a good part of Lanka is quite amazing. Uh, when you read it, it's unbelievable. This is nicely delineated in one of the recent editions of the Ramayan, which is a series of books that are coming out by one devotee named Suba Vilas. He has put the fifth version of the seven versions of his Ramayan into print. And in this fifth version, it's all about Hanuman in Lanka. So you'll, if you read that, you'll be amazed because in this particular uh, delineation, narration, you'll find some of the details that you don't read anywhere else about what Hanuman actually had to go through. And he was, he, for 24 straight hours, he simply was looking, searching, and fighting. <laughs> Hanuman was so powerful that nobody could 
could capture him. But he, he personally got captured just to meet Ravana, because he wanted to meet Ravana. And basically, he told Ravana that, you know, you, uh, you're such a fool. You have so many things, but you're, you're acting in the wrong way. He insulted Ravana. Ravana got so mad he was about to kill him or try to kill him. But Vibhishan stepped in and said, no, you cannot kill a dutta or a messenger, but you can torture him. So that's when they set his tail on fire. And then, of course, he broke loose from the chains and set half the city on fire before he left. So it's quite obvious that it was Hanuman that was the one who actually found Sita and made Sita feel, uh, what we say, peaceful. And gave, but he gave, he gave her the message that Ram doesn't know where you are, but now we know, and I will come back with Ram, and we will destroy Lanka, and you'll return to Lord Ramachandra. So that was that's an interesting narration of what was went through between Sita and Hanuman. And Sita was a little suspicious of Hanuman at first, not knowing if who he was, and she was actually thinking he might have been a manifestation of Ravana who took another form. But therefore, even Hanuman was doubted in his mission. But still, he persevered, even though he was doubted initially. So when it was all over, it was actually understood that practically the hero of the whole Ramayana is Sri Hanuman. <laughs> So that that's pretty much obvious when you read the, the Ramayana. Although Jatayu should not be minimized, Jatayu tried to save Sita by, by attacking Ravana, and there was a big fight. Unfortunately, uh, Jataya was no match for Ravana. But somehow or other, because of that fight, the monkey soldiers found out about this capture and then you know Cosita had thrown her jewelry down and the monkeys found it and later on that was revealed to Lord Ramachandra so of course Jatayu played a big part in ultimately trying to bring back Sita but it was Hanuman who did all the work <laughs> And that's pretty obvious when you read the Ramayana. <laughs> Is there any any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Sri Ramchandra Ki Jai, Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman Ji Ki Jai. <laughs>